Paleontology is you can either study the actual animal itself uh, as an individual, say uh, one of these bovids or a crocodile, or you can also study animal communities. So you can reconstruct what past communities look like and get an idea of how communities have changed. If you, if you find a fossil, um, you typically don't find the whole animal filleted out in front of you. Uh, typically what you're getting is a, a fragment, maybe a full skull, but maybe a fragment. So we found new species, and uh, the only way you really know that is with a comparative collection. If you don't have a comparative collection, then you say, okay, now I need to go to Harvard, Smithsonian, Florida Museum of Natural History. I need to go, I need to travel to these places. That means I can do it, but my students can't. Well, if we have it here, I can look at it here, my students can look at it here. So like a library, it's good to have your own complete comparative collection. I've been here uh, 22 years now. Uh, we've built up a, a, one of the leading crocodilian collections for uh, North America. So for lizards, snakes, uh, we have probably one of the, the top in the country. In fact, there's no question we have one of the top in the country. Uh, we constantly are getting people uh, requesting to borrow specimens. For mammals of the southwest, pretty darn good. Uh, for bovids, we're looking pretty nice uh, for a good sample of what's found throughout the world. Uh, for uh, mollusks, uh, the snails and clams of the arid southwest, uh, we definitely have the, the tops. Well, the, the neat thing about Terrapa, Sonora, Mexico, it's a fossil site that's only about 120 miles south of the Arizona border, south of Agua Prieta and there's literally hundreds of thousands of bones being exposed. And uh, the best way to, to look at those uh, as researchers is to take students down. I like to explain what we're doing here at NAU uh, as living research. No, the, the students are in a real life scenario. Living research, you're actually in the bones. You're in the sediments. We're camping out on the edge of this little Opata Indian village community called San Clemente de Terapa, and not only do they, uh, the students get to experience the fossils, they ex get to experience the culture. They'll get an area, they may be uh, just looking on their hands and knees looking for uh, micro animals, and there's, not everything's going to be as large as this crocodile. We're going to find frogs, we're going to find leg bones of, of, of very small bats and things, so there's, there's a micro level, and so they might be on their hands and knees all day long, scooting around looking for bones. Uh, they might be digging up some of the sediments, putting it in bags and carrying it to the river uh, and washing it through sieves. Uh, they might be working with a, a, a pickaxe or a dental pick, excavating out a giant ground sloth. Some of the big bones are, are too weak uh, and, and potentially could crumble. So what we'll do is we'll kind of put a plaster jacket around. So like if you break your arm, you want to set it so it doesn't break more. So what we'll, we'll, we'll do that and then bring it back to the lab. And we found some of what they call glyptodon. Glyptodon is an extinct form of armadillo-like animal. It stood about uh, almost a meter and a half high. And it's about two and a half, three meters long. So you're looking at something that's about the size of a VW bug car uh, with an attitude and a long tail, and this animal, which is not known at this time in northern Mexico, and here is just common at Terrapa, and so that's becoming the mascot for Terrapa. I think NAU uh, does a superb job, in, a, in, in many ways a, a unique job, of pulling in research for each professor, pulling it in into the, a classroom atmosphere for the undergraduate and graduate. So, NEU does a lot of undergraduate research, and uh, I think that's a real plus for us. I think we don't realize how unusual our institution is in that sense.